The real power of using phase space comes when we consider nonlinear systems. So let's consider the motion of a pendulum. It's attached to a pivot, it's some mass m on, the length, on some string of length l, or some rod of length l. And we're interested in describing the position of the pendulum, which means we want to describe the angle theta, which varies as a function of time. So how do we describe this? Well, the dynamics of the pendulum is described by the second law for rotation, namely the sum of all torques must be equal to the moment of inertia i times angular acceleration alpha. Remember, alpha is the second derivative of theta, and the moment of inertia i is ml squared for this case. And the torque, the sum of all torques, is just the torque due to gravity, which is minus rf sine of the angle beta, where beta is the angle between the force and the radius vector from the point of rotation. So beta here turns out to be just the same as theta. And so the torque is just minus mgl sine of theta. Okay, so putting all this together, um, we get an equation of motion for the motion of the pendulum, theta, from the second law, which looks like ml squared, theta double dot, is equal to minus lg sine of theta. Or, making that look a little nicer, theta double dot is minus g over l sine of theta. So this is a nonlinear second order differential equation. And so we really don't have a whole lot of tricks to solve this. So let's add one. So a new trick that we can use to understand what solutions to this look like is for nonlinear differential equations, uh, we analyze the phase space of solutions to this particular differential equation. And that'll give us a qualitative feel for the behavior, even if we can't exactly solve the solutions. So this involves uh, actually doing an extra step in that we first have to convert our second order differential equation to a pair of first order coupled differential equations uh, in order to look at phase space. The classic way to do this is to just call theta dot um, some new variable phi and because of that phi dot is just theta double dot so that means that phi dot is just minus g over l sine theta. So the two equations we have are theta dot is equal to phi, phi dot is minus g over l sine of theta. We want to look at the phase space of this system, the system corresponding to the system of theta and phi. So in order to look at phase space and to make phase space plots of these solutions, we first need to look at critical, critical points of our system. So all critical points of this system uh, fall under, well, they just have one set of uh, um, general solutions, namely phi must be equal to zero and sine of theta must also be equal to zero. But there's many ways of doing this. So we could have phi equal to zero and theta equal to zero. And that's an obvious critical point that corresponds to the pendulum just hanging straight down. Uh, that's clearly a critical point in that it will always stay there. Two other critical points are phi is equal to zero, theta is equal to pi, and phi is equal to zero, theta is equal to minus pi. These are really the same solution. Um, namely, in this case, what we have is a pendulum that rather than standing straight down, is actually standing straight up. And the angle pi is really the same as the angle minus pi. So these are really the same uh, configuration when this pendulum is standing straight up. Okay. So how do we study the behavior of the phase space around these critical points? Well, so now we need a new trick, yet another trick to study the behavior. Um, near a critical point, uh, we actually, what we need to do is we're going to linearize our differential equations around the critical points and then study the differential equations there. So what do we mean by that? What we mean is we're going to let our solution phi be approximately the critical point plus some small extra bit, delta phi or delta theta, where delta phi and delta theta are small, namely, uh, you could think of them as being much, much less than one in this context. So we're going to linearize our differential equations about our critical points. So let's start with the easy one, namely phi is equal to zero and theta is equal to zero. 
So what that means is phi uh, linearized is approximately delta phi. Delta theta is approximately delta theta. If you take a time derivative of both sides of these equations, you get uh, phi dot is delta phi dot, and theta dot is delta theta dot. Um, the only other thing we need is that sine of theta is now sine of delta theta, and delta theta is small. So if you remember your Taylor expansions, uh, sine of x expanded is approximately x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus yada yada yada. We only care about the linear term, uh, and so sine of delta theta is approximately delta theta, for delta theta much, much less than 1. Okay, so then uh, using these linearizations, we now have the coupled linear first order differential equations, plugging these expansions into our expressions above. Delta theta dot is delta phi, and delta phi dot is minus g over L delta theta. I can write this as a system of differential equations in matrix form, like so. And so to understand the behavior around the critical point 0, 0, we need to study the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of this linear system, of this matrix. Um, so that's easy enough to do. We can calculate the eigenvalues, and the eigenvalues are plus or minus i square root of g over l. Namely, they're pure imaginary numbers. Uh, and if you recall what happens with pure imaginary numbers, the interpretation is that you should get stable oscillations for your solutions. And so if we look at phase space then uh, of phi and theta, so our critical point in the center, our behavior around that should look like stable oscillations or stable circles around this point. And if you think about it, that makes actually a lot of sense. Uh, if you're around theta equal to zero, namely you're near the bottom of the pendulum, the pendulum just swings back and forth. It oscillates back and forth around theta equal to zero. And that's all our phase space is telling us, is that the solution is just going back and forth uh, around theta equal to zero. Okay, so let's look at the other critical point. Phi is equal to zero and theta is equal to pi. Let's look at positive pi to start with. So we have the same uh, types of relationships, except now theta is what we're calling uh, pi plus delta theta. But that means theta dot is still uh, delta theta dot, since pi is a constant. Sine of theta is now sine of pi plus delta theta, which you can write as minus sine of delta theta, just by an angle addition uh, formula. And then you can Taylor expand that again to get minus delta theta by the usual Taylor expansion. So our differential equations now become a, a new set of coupled differential equations around our new critical point, delta theta dot is delta phi, and delta phi dot is plus g over L delta theta. Uh, and we can write this again in matrix form. And we notice that there's just one small change here. Rather than a minus sign as we had before, we now have a plus sign, plus g over L rather than minus g over L. It's a really small change, but it has really big implications for the interpretation in phase space. So again, let's look at eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. Uh, so that's not too hard to do. The eigenvalues that you get are lambda is equal to plus g over L and lambda is equal to minus g over L. And if you recall, the plus g over L, a positive eigenvalue, implies growth. The eigenvector corresponds to 1, 1, or rather y is equal to x. And a minus uh, eigenvector, minus g over L, corresponds to decay. Uh, and the eigenvector corresponding to that is something like y is equal to minus x. If you recall, this is exactly the case that you should have for a saddle point. And that's what we'll see in phase space. So now let's make a sketch of phase space uh, using what we know. So we have a critical point at zero, and we have stable solutions around that, stable circles. We have a critical point at theta is equal to pi, and along the y is equal to x solution, you have growth. And along the y is equal to minus x line, you have decay, so solutions will decay into the critical point there. And it turns out, if you try and look at the other critical point, um, theta is equal to minus pi, it's actually identical to the critical point theta is equal to pi. Again, that's not surprising because it corresponds physically to the exact same configuration. 
Uh, and so you get growth again along the y equal to x line and decay along the y equal to minus x line. So you get behaviors that look something like this. We can connect up these lines and you get these interesting structures here. So if you're inside here, you keep uh, oscillating around the center. Actually, if you're outside, then you don't oscillate around the center. You just keep um, going back and forth. So notice that the theta is equal to pi or minus pi uh, are unstable solutions. And again, this makes sense. If you tip the pendulum just a little bit off of the vertical, uh, off to one side, then the pendulum falls back down. It doesn't like to stay at theta equal to pi. Finally, let's just look at what the actual phase space is for this. Uh, and you get something like this. And again, you see these lines and this um, structure. Namely, there's a saddle point at pi and minus pi with these uh, growing and decaying solutions uh, and oscillations about the center.